Thank you all for tuning in to Politics, Religion, and Whiskey, the Josh Terry Podcast, brought to you by Raising the Grace Studios. I want to give a big shout out to uh, Straight Haggard Thread Company. Thank you for the awesome lids you sent me. To Gridiron Coffee, uh, Brad, y'all are killing it up there in Macon. Williams Tire, Nobles Networking, um, Par Hopper, Mr. Jay Piper. Uh, y'all go check them out. And also, Proud 90 Golf. Thank y'all. Thank you to Red Circle. Uh, for all the corporate sponsors and all that good stuff and all the people that make the show possible. Uh, so this is what happened, folks. I had two shows cancel on me today, last minute. Neither one of them could help it. They uh, both rescheduled for next week, and I was sitting here tonight, and I was on live on TikTok. And I was like, I want to do a unique show. I want to do a fun show. I want to do a show I haven't done yet. And there's this very, very attractive, I'm talking about smoke show of a woman who started following me on TikTok. I looked at her pictures, her Instagram. I didn't think this bit was real. This bit is real, real. And uh, she came into the thing earlier today, and she is a killer. Uh, how do you, what, what name do y'all want to go by as far as dancers go? Erotic dancer? Uh, I like spicy gymnast, personally. I like spicy gymnast, too. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll go with that one. Well, she looks like she'd be a fucking killer um, as a spicy gymnast, I would like to introduce y'all to Miss Chanel, Turkish lady, on uh, on my TikTok and all that good stuff. Drop your uh your social media handles or whatever you want to put out there. Um, I guess how do you how do you do that on here? Do what you just you say this? This is what you do. You say TikTok. Say your TikTok name. Oh, okay. Say, here right. you go. We want people uh, to fucking find you. Uh, I believe. It's Turkish like, underscore Turkish lady. Something I don't I don't usually look at my username. Um, I'm sure you could post it in the comments or something. But I, I will. Um, my Instagram is underscore Chanel East Coast. Um, just Chanel like the perfume, but add an extra L. Chanel. Yeah, Chanel East Coast. I, isn't there another Chanel that's famous? Uh, Chanel West Coast, and she's not. Oh, my that's why your name sounded so fucking familiar. Yeah, yeah. So I'm the less annoying hot version. I don't know. She's pretty hot, but her annoyance no. outweighs her hot. Laugh kills it for me. No, her her laugh is like. It's I'm like good. I'll go home like, and jack off. Like nails on a chalkboard <laughs> to me. So fucking bad. So uh, oh. obviously, what first drew me to drew me to you. Was uh, I looked at your. I always, when people are adding me on lives and stuff, I'll go look at their videos on my phone or whatever while I'm on my iPad to watch the live. And uh, I looked at your stuff and it's like, you're a badass. Thank you. You, you are a scary, good looking. You've got ruined my life written all over you. Yeah, I have. You have fresh, like my precious eyes. <laughs> like, I'll destroy you. I know it's, it's a, I'll fucking be Gollum. You can go right ahead. I will say my precious, my precious, all you want me to. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what drew me to you is your, your videos and stuff. And then I added you on everything and I saw that you were a, a dancer. Um, you know, I've never had a dancer on my show. There's like a million questions that if I could align this up, right, I would have wanted to ask. You. Um, I, I think what I'm going to start off by asking you is, you know, kind of where you grew up and uh, how you grew up. Like, what what uh, what were you like as a kid and preteen? And where did you come uh, from? <clears throat> I grew up really strict family, actually, which is surprising. Um, I grew up in the Cleveland area and went to a Christian school. Um, I was in a really dark place in my teen years because I had an abusive father. And so kind of pushed me in the direction of trying to be independent and as like a 17 year old you can't be very independent no. so you got you got a man up and um basically that's what i did i stayed with friends till i turned 18 and then i started becoming a dancer because it gave me the financial freedom to be able to do what i wanted in life it helped me reach my goals paid for my nursing you know it's not all like gl glitz and glamour like people think where it's just like oh you're gonna put your tits and your ass in people's face and 
you know, you sleep with everybody for money is really not like that. Actually, it's, it's not like Hollywood puts it out there to be some of us have brains and we put that money like in the good things like savings and college and, you know, buying a home, not all of us spend it frivolously. So it's taught me a lot and it's made me a stronger person, but I'm kind of an asshole now because of it too. So I don't blame you one bit for that. I've got to ask you a question because I know everybody that listens to the show is going to ask me why I did not ask this question. Okay. Every stripper that I've ever came in contact with always said they was going to school for nursing. Do you actually have a degree or actually have a certificate in anything like where you've actually pursued that? Yeah. Uh, so I finished my LPN and I eventually will be going back for my RN. Um, cause I would like to work in the, uh, labor and delivery eventually. I just kind of took a break cause I didn't want to be burnt out. Um, cause it is a lot of work. If I, I guess if I was like married and had a partner and a teammate, it might be a little easier to go pursue more college, but as a single mom with two children, I got a lot to juggle and just doing my RN would be really, really hard. And I want to give my kids the main focus, but I also want to give them a good life. So it's like double-edged sword. But there are a lot of dancers who say they're in nursing just because they want to sound smart. They want the men to be like, well, she has more to offer than just her looks. And I get it. You want to be seen as more, but like for the girls that do do nursing, it's kind of insulting. So it's not only insulting to the girls that do do nurses, it's when they ask us to believe the fact that their ass can't, or their ass is going to school to be a nurse, and they've got tattoos that aren't even spelled right. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't tell me that you're trying to go to school to be a nurse. And it's obvious that you're not. You actually, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I'm real bad about prejudging people because I think, like, everybody's full of shit. I didn't know how intelligent or anything you would be because I, I, I just don't know about people, right? Right. You actually, I, be, I would believe you if I met you outside of the bar and you said that you were going to school to be a nurse. You actually sound smart. Right. A lot of them don't. It, they, they try to, you know, play it up. I get why they play it up, but also I'd rather you just tell me you got eight kids you need to feed. Right. I get it. I just, I've been through so many girls that have said they've done it and then you you sit there and you're like thinking the most common questions and they don't even know the answers to you. Like I was a CNA. I started at the bottom. I wiping people's asses, you know, I was a CNA. I took care of people, but like, I say it like that, but at the same token, I absolutely loved the journey because yeah, it's a shit job, but it's also a great job because half the people that I took care of their families would dump them there and then never come back. And you became their families. So it was a good job, it was a fun job, but it was also a hard job because when those people passed, you had an attachment to them and you became their family because their families never came around. So I started from the bottom. I was a CNA and then I did phlebotomy. So I was like a lab tech and then LPN and I just kind of stopped there and I didn't want to get burnt out. So I just took a break. So how long have you been taking the break for? That might happen. So it was kind of like, you know, you started taking the break before the pandemic right before it which is crazy because i don't have the vaccine and i don't want to get into like politics and like vaxes versus non-vaxxers but we i don't personally give a fuck around here I, I don't have it um and i see a lot of the nurse friends that i have that don't have it are having to resign and i couldn't imagine going to school for for that and then having to resign and find a new career after that's been your whole life. Yeah, anybody that I mean, I understand why they why they mandate it, but it doesn't mean I have to like it. Those people right. should not lose their jobs. I mean, they should just, if anything, they should find another transfer to another facility that they can work <laughs> at, and you know, not have to have. It. I right. don't. I don't like that shit. Everybody should it should be to each their own. Exactly, and like where I live, Columbus. Um, our mayor just brought back the mask mandate this Friday. So we have to start wearing masks at stores and shit again. So, I mean, what's my that gonna, kid. What's that going to do to you working? I mean, it's going to make me sound like Darth Vader, but hopefully people still want to dance. 
<laughs> you know, I think it's just annoying more than it is unnecessary. I get, I see where people are coming from with it, but if you're eating or drinking at the club or wherever you are, at least with my job, it's drinking and eating. You don't have to wear one, but people kind of abuse that. So it's like, well, I was just chewing, you know what I mean? So see where I'm from the fact that you just said people eating at the club. If you saw the strip club, that was the closest strip club to me. I would rather get kicked in the dick by a professional soccer player than eat anything that this place cooked. It is hard for me to believe. Like, I don't understand how people could eat at a strip club. I mean, I've worked at a couple that serve food and don't, don't knock it till you try it. I mean, the food was good, but it's just like, then I see the memes where there's like people eating food and there's like SpongeBob's ass right here, with like a thong on. And it's like, what it's like to eat at a strip club. So, you know what I mean? I'm tossed up about it. I get hungry and I'm like, hey, thank God there's food here. But at the same time, I'm like, there's food here. <sighs> exactly. How long um, have you been you know, doing this? I started at 18 and I am 29 turning 30. So about 11 years. So I it's not you, a fun little thing for me. Like I've done it. It's, you know, more than a hobby for me, but I'm good at it. I know all the tips, the tricks, the ins, the outs. I know how to talk to somebody versus being like rubbing their shoulder with a firm grip and be like want to dance you know I can like hey how was your day you know genuine interest before I'm like you want to spend forty dollars on a lap dance you know how, how would you approach me I mean I think I would as I do with everybody else I would sit back I would assess the room I kind of people watch I'm a curious little soul so I just watch people um I normally, when I get to work, I don't just straight go up to people and start talking to them. I kind of like to get a feel for the crowd. So I'll go up, I'll do my stage set, see who's kind of interested and see who's looking and go from there. Because it's kind of easier than just shooting my shot and, you know, into the dark. Um, I would just ask you what your interests are, how your day was, if you're from the, the usual. Are you from here? What do you do? just to get a basis, but then like, just have genuine conversation versus I've sat here for 10 minutes shooting the shit. You want to dance? Cause that's what a lot of the new girls do. And then they're like, he didn't like me. He's a piece of shit. Well, maybe he just didn't want to spend money because there was no connection. There was no, I'm here for more than just your $40. I don't so. think y'all could, you're, you're an incredibly attractive woman. Incredibly. And like I said at the beginning of the show, you've got ruined my life all over your face. I still don't think you can get $40 out of me. I mean, I would try. I'm persuasive, but. I think I could get your phone number before you got my $40. Mm, that would be a test for well, sure. See, but what I mean by that is I know I'm not giving you $40. So even if it takes all damn night to try to get your phone number, I think I could pull it before you got my money. And I think I would charge 40 just for someone to be able to contact me outside of my job. Oh, no, you'd give it to me. <laughs> you'd be smitten. I'm an asshole. I don't give it I, out at all. See, I don't that's what's great. Okay. I'm an asshole, too. Assholes combat assholes. I would, right. I, would be, I would make you laugh, and you would be thinking about whatever stupid joke I told you while you're up there, uh, you know, doing bands make her dance. Yeah. But I don't know if I'd give out my number. I really don't ever. I'm different. I'm, I, a, I'm an I alien. Just, just mainly because I'll never see those men again. There's no point in getting their number when I know what their main component of wanting it for is. And I'm just not interested in anything with anyone. So, See, I respect that you said that because I would not trust a woman's attention that gave you her number while she's working at a strip club. The first right. of all, nine times out of ten, it's not going to be her actual number anyway. And the rest of it is... If it is, she's a trick. I'm yeah, exactly, exactly. Unless anyone like interested in that ten minutes she met you and you're the love of her life, she, it's either a fake number or she's, she's going to act like you're a trick and try to get money out of you. She'll give you some sob story. My tire broke on the way to work or I need help with my rent. She'll sweet talk you, get you in a Steve's like sweet, vulnerable spot, 
after talking for a couple of weeks that you're like, well, this bill's due. Can you help me? I've seen it. I've seen it. And I'm like, I just don't, my girls are like, how do you handle this life? I was like, well, for one, I don't give my number out <laughs> to nobody. At 29, so, are you like the house mother? I'm I, the oldest stripper in most of the clubs that I work at. So I'm like the granny. <laughs> but you look, you look like it. I mean, you look younger than you are, but yeah, I can see that. I can see stripping being a young cat skin. It is. It's very hard to compete. With the younger girls, obviously like they've got younger, tighter bodies, but there's plastic surgery, but you know what I mean? I mean, looks only go so far. Yes, yeah, strip club, that's mainly what the men go for. But most of them also, hello there. They also like someone who can hold a conversation and those 18 year olds aren't very intellectual and are like got a five minute span for their like shiny red ball. So that's that's one hundred percent why I don't like younger women. Are like that much younger of women. It's because it, regardless of what industry they're in, they're very, they're very fans thinking wise. So, what's the weirdest thing that has ever been asked of you at a strip club? Um, I've had a man ask me to basically walk on him with my heels on, and then stab him the balls but he loved it and I, it was very strange for me to be like am I gonna get fired for stabbing this man multiple times with heels in his balls but I mean he had clothes on and everything don't get all weird but like I would take my heels and just and he Trust loved me. but it when was you, weird when you start talking <laughs> about stabbing somebody in the balls with heels them having clothes on or off does not make it less weird. <laughs> it's that, that, still that's fucking weird yeah, I mean, I get guys that are like, pull my nipples as hard as you can. I like it when they bleed. And then they come back. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? Like, to me, I don't, the younger girls are really afraid of doing kinks. And for me, I'm sitting there like, why? That's where all the money's at. I love it. I feed off of it. But then in the same token, I look at these men and like, how did you figure this out? That this was something you were into? I need to know. Who hurt you? <laughs> That so. right there, that right there is why I will not ever do weird shit with a woman. Because the problem with it is if you find out you like something weird with one girl and y'all break up, the next relationship, you got to ask this woman to put a pogo stick in your asshole or something because that's yeah. what you're into. It's, uh, and they're like, oh, no, I'm not here. I'm out of here. It's okay. interesting for sure. And I'm just like. I don't judge anyone. You like what you like, but I want to know how you found out you like it. That's all. I'm, just, I'm I genuinely curious how you knew you like that. I judge everyone that has a weird kink. I, I, I want to know like you do. I want to know how you <laughs> I just it like, most times. Why? <laughs> why does it bring you enjoyment? There's some fucking weird ones out there, dude. Yo, yeah, definitely. You had to have there, them. There's a there's a girl I know who walks around, uh, walks this guy around the club on his hands and knees and he wears a dog collar and she's a leash and she leads him around the club and he pays her $600. And I'm like, what in the fuck? <laughs> men Never are, in my life. Men that are like that, that always amazes me are the guys that are so successful in life. Like oh, for sure. Or whatever. High corporate, yeah. big money. You have the weirdest fetishes weirdest god i want to know what other weird shit people have asked you to do you say fetishes because like from my aspect of it like you probably can't act on too many people's fetishes you know i, I don't i don't know what the policies are where the fuck you're at as far as touching and whatever but like what's some other weird shit that has been asked you that stands out that you'll always remember um there's a man to this day that still comes to my club and asks me to spit in his mouth every time he sees me. Oh, fuck And no. I'm, I always tell him no, but he like, he's relentless. You've done it. I have not. I'm not allowed. Has he not, has he not offered, has he not offered you enough money yet? Uh, he's offered me a lot, but my manager's like, don't you dare. So. That manager ain't got to know if he's spitting his mouth. I am not spitting in another human's mouth unless I am personally fucking them and I'm in a relationship with them. Oh, you're into that? If they like it. But like oh, I said, God if no. I'm in, I'm not personally like, I don't want someone spitting in my mouth. I think uh, it's disgusting. 
because the spits are warm. But if someone that I'm dating wants to that's try, that's not the first thing to spit in your mouth. First of all, you're right. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> if the person I am with wants to try something new, who am I to judge them? I will try it because if it brings them pleasure, it brings them pleasure. I would want them to do something for me that brings me pleasure. But if it's out of my comfort zone, I'll be like, hey, like I'm not comfortable with that. I'm sorry. I draw my line way before spitting in my mouth. I'm so goddamn vanilla, I ought to be an ice cream. Oh, my Lord. I'm just saying. Like, that's just too much. I, think it's, I don't hurt. I've tried it once, and I literally wanted to vomit because it was so hey, warm too much. in my mouth. And I was like, I'm good. This is disgusting. Once again, I, I don't, still don't I, believe that that's what <laughs> sickens you by. It was gross. It was too warm. It was too up. Uh, See, I was like, that's gross. Damn, what, did he have strip throat while he was doing it? No, I was just like, it's too warm. It's not natural. <laughs> Come is a situation, you know what I mean? Like, you're in the moment, but, like, spit? No. You know different. What? Different. You're I know, different. I'm strange. It's different. No, no, you are. You are. Next thing you're going to do is start comparing textures of the two. Oh, you are... See, I would figure you'd be the wildest of the wild. I talked to uh, this girl who I was a huge, like, me and her just hit it off real well. She was a uh, she was a stripper at uh, a place here in Georgia. I didn't know she was before we, like, started talking on this dating app. And uh, anyway, we ended up liking each other, being around each other for a good bit or whatever. I didn't care that she was. And uh, she was into the weirdest shit. I have like ever, what? Like she wanted you to choke her out to the point of passing out and then slapping her and waking her back up. Like, yeah, yeah like, I don't like hurt. It would always say, I don't like pain. I don't like anything about pain, but she was just so out there. And, uh, I would figure you would be one of those that was to the most extreme point of kinks and shit. I mean, I like my ass smacked. I mean, I have my, I have my certain things in relationships when I'm with men, like, I like my ass smacked. I love it. I like being spanked. It's weird, but I, I find enjoyment out of it. So, like, I made it a game in my last relationship. Like, I roll my eyes all the time. Like, I don't even think about it. I do it so much. And so he turned it into, like, a game. He was like, every time you roll your eyes, you get your ass smacked. And it would add up, and I would forget about it. And you'd get home, and he'd be whooping my ass, and I'd be loving it. So, you know? <laughs> I was like, no, oh, shit. no, 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 no. Dear Penthouse, <laughs> this is how this room, how did Josh end up driving to Ohio? Yeah, I uh, love, love my ass grab, smacked. Mm, the whole grab then, like smacked and grab combo. Magnificent. I'm, I'm at a loss of words. You're the <laughs> first person that's ever made me fucking speechless on the show. I love it. Your mouth is just, it's like, it's one of these good combinations of, uh, it's complete filth, but it's also beautiful at the same time. It's like, all right, this bitch could literally, like, it's not even funny anymore. (laughs) I'm sitting here wondering where the fuck you're at in Ohio. Columbus. But that's not where you work, though, is it? I mean, I'll work everywhere, honestly, like during the week. I'm I'm a homebody. I'm with my kids usually, or at night after they go to bed, I'll go to the club. But I'm mainly like if I don't want to work during the week, I have that financial freedom because I do make great money as a dancer. It's just kind of like if I want a little extra, if I want to go spoil my kids or take them somewhere and not have to budget, I work during the week. But I mainly make my dough traveling on the weekends. I go different places. And I just make great money. Like this weekend, I'll be in North or South Carolina. So uh, I say it all the time on my shows. I love strippers. I don't like going to strip clubs, but I love a woman social. I appreciate the fact that you have figured out men are stupid. And when we see women that look like you, uh, we're like, oh, let's just give these bitches our money. And like, we can't explain it. I know I can't. It's like, hey, here's my debit card, credit score fucking go ready to move in or not but i know like i appreciate that y'all kind of capitalized on our stupidity 
True. I mean, I mean it's y- y'all understand. Like, there's women. Y'all, I get it that you would rather be home with your kids during the week. In- For sure. Instead of working 60 hours and still not making what you make in two days. I get it. Honestly, I think for me, it's the, not only what I have to work longer to make what I do in one night in a two week paycheck form, but I'm also taking that time away from when I could be with my children or running errands to better my home. Plus with me working a normal job, working those long ass hours, I'm mainly working that job to pay for a sitter. And it's pointless when then I have to have a schedule. I've got to pay a sitter on a certain time. And all that money that I work two weeks for, which is trash, goes to my sitter. I don't even get to see it where I could work two nights out of a week, Friday, Saturday, on a weekend somewhere like Alabama or Florida and make three, four thousand dollars and come home and be like, fuck it. Not to stay home all week with my children. You want to go? You want to go to Disney? Let's go. Like I like having that financial freedom to be like, if they want it, I don't have to be like, well, is it in the budget? Can I fit my bills around this? Like I, I like to spoil my children. I like to be able to have nice things and go eat wherever I want without having to be like, damn, can I afford this? And I have that financial freedom. I have, I can like, I'm my own boss. I can go wherever I want, anywhere I go in the world. I'll have a job. There's strip clubs and damn near everywhere. And I'm not saying I have a big ass head, but I'm decent looking and I'm pretty sure 98% of the time I'm going to get hired wherever I go. So, you know, I, I'd be stupid when I say not the most. What so. is the, uh, what, what place and how much were the most lucrative? What place have you made the most at? I swear it's weird for me, but like New Orleans. I just do so well, but I think it's just the such a diverse cultural place because you've got the natives who live there and they're pretty wild themselves. But then you have like it's a party place. It's where people go to have fun. It's not it's known for drinking, for strip clubs, for being wild, for having fun, good food. So I mean it's I have never left with less than four grand every time I've gone to New Orleans and I've only worked two days. My last trip to New Orleans, I made 10 grand in one night. So it is, and I hate to say this because I don't personally have sugar daddies, but New Orleans is full of rich men, like rich sugar daddies who just want to throw their money at pretty girls. It's and like old, that, that, ten, money down there. that 10 grand wasn't like I did a couple dances. Like that was a tip. I got 10 grand and I didn't have to tip out any of that. That was just, Hey, you're pretty. I like you. Thank you for keeping me company. Here's 10 grand in cash. Every broke ass woman listening to the show right now. It's well, to, women are hate me for my job, anyways, because don't you're a stripper. Where's your morals? You're a mother. Yeah, you know what? I am a mother. And you know what's crazy is I get to spend as much time with my children as I want go anywhere I want with my children. I don't have to worry about bills. I don't need a husband to be able to make it in life like you guys depend on, which is I'm not bashing people who have husbands, but I'm like, you, most of you financially depend on your husband to make your life. I am my own husband. <laughs> like I am the, the rich guy your mom tells you to marry. So. I, I understand why they're mad at you because a lot of men hate you. A lot of men hate me that I'm 33. I'm, I do talking for a living. I get to talk to pretty things like you and other people. I don't have a normal life. Like this is my life or whatever. And it's in a way, I think they're jealous of folks yeah. like you. It's because hey, they have to go to a shitty job. They have they to, have to work hard to make money and we don't. And morals, there are a lot of people that if you don't plan on being a politician later in life or anything like that, I, there's nothing wrong with what you're doing. There's nothing wrong in my mind whatsoever what you're doing. You're taking your kid. You're maximizing your time with your child and the money you can make oh, yeah. in a short period of time. That is from financial sense or just common sense. It makes sense. And there's a lot of folks that just don't get it. They're probably just kind of jealous of you. 
And the one I get a lot is, well, you're getting up there in age. You can't do that forever. But like, you've got to think about it this way. There are so many opportunities in this industry that people just don't even think about. Like, I don't necessarily think I'm going to be a dancer strip slash stripper when I'm 40. But at the same time, if I look good and my body allows it and I like, you can't tell I look 40. Fuck yeah, I'm going to do it. Why not do it as long as I can? Plus, I could be, I've been in the industry so long. I know so many people. I've networked with so many people. I can become a manager at a strip club. I can become a female co owner of one of the strip clubs. I could damn near save my money and buy my own strip club and start my own strip club. You know what I mean? I could be a house mom. I could be a, a cosmetic tattooer. And I've been in the industry long. I know tons of girls that would love cosmetic tattooing. I have so many avenues that people don't even think about you're actually 10 times smarter than i thought you were gonna be thanks no, I, I know i know i'm not sound like, on. i know that makes me sound like an asshole because it's like oh he thought i was gonna be stupid you never know what you're gonna get i mean you really, you really don't like i'm not knocking you i just didn't know it seems like you've got it figured out i get why you would do it now it's kind of like a means to it and yeah. it's, it's where you your setup. There's somebody that I know that has an OnlyFans, and she's made like 1.5 million dollars, and she's bought mm -hmm. property and getting ready to build a house and everything, yeah. and she's set up for the next phase. And that's kind of how I feel about you, like it's, playing it out until it's over with, but you're ready to go to the next. Sure, phase. you ride out that that horse as long as you can, but you maximize as much as you can. Like I have. I have an opportunity. I could do nursing and make great money. I do dancing and I make great money. I have my own OnlyFans and I make great money. All of these different avenues, I have income coming from different sources. I'm smart with my money though. I invest in certain things that I think are going to profit. You know what I mean? Like I have a savings account. I plan on buying a house. I, you know, my, my kid's college is completely paid for. Like I have two, they, my kids have at least a hundred grand in each of their own bank accounts. Like I was not a stupid stripper. When I was 18, I saved everything. So. And you look like you live in a nice place now. So I don't yeah. Think and I'm moving that. again. I'll be moving to New Albany, which is like a really, really nice area with a good school district and rent there is at least two grand for a month. So I'm doing just fine for all the people that hate me as a stripper i'm doing yeah. i'm doing well you're obviously killing it um, how uh do your kids know anything about it um that's a tough question i mean i've had other fun jobs just for part-time just for like fun i've done like bath and body works i've worked i used to work at starbucks for five years um i've worked at victoria's secret you know, I've worked everywhere, but I mean, my daughter, she sees me washing my work clothes. She sees me like pull out all my sparkly heels and she likes to play dress up, but I don't think she fully understands it. I don't think they either do, but I, at the same time, I don't think they care. I mean, my kids are so innocent that they're just like, mom's going to work. So how old are they? I have a six-year-old uh, son and a seven-year-old daughter. I mean, they just don't question it. They're just like, mom's going to work. I mean, uh, I guess when they're older and they find out, I'm not going to be too ashamed of it because they have a great life. They have everything they could ever want. They want for nothing. So See, I, I think I think I the overshadow of them having a wonderful life and a mom that loves them and provides for them and gives them everything they want in his home, 98% of the time, I don't think that's going to really affect their decisions in life. So. See, I 100% agree with you, like, I don't think they care. You've provided such a cool environment for your kids to go do whatever and all that stuff. I think as long as it is a meet, I don't think they yeah, for sure. Give a shit. Like, if, do a somebody, yeah, if somebody ever says, hey, I saw your mom's butthole last night, I'm sure it would upset you. But also at the same time, I think your kids or whoever's kids would realize, like, I got through a lot of shit because of this. Right. I think it's tougher though like I have tough skin because I used to be such a sensitive person when I started dancing like 
I didn't look like this pretty blonde. Like I, I was, I don't know how you not seen, but like I had a side of my head shaved. I looked like a rocker. And I was, I was young. I was dumb and people would make fun of me. And I, I would like, I want to go to work for a few days. I'd be butt hurt. Now I'm sitting there like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you don't affect me. It's you saw my butthole. My kids profited from that. And my son, it was my son or daughter, said, someone said that to them. They'd be like, guess what? And we went to Disney off it, bitch. The fuck? <laughs> my kids don't care. We can, we can go off to Disney on a whim. We can go to the beach whenever. My kids, once they're grown enough to know that mom makes tons of money, I don't give a fuck how I made it as long as they can profit from it and have fun. So You're I just, my happy. lifestyle with my children, I'm not strict with them. Like, you know, I want them to have a good life, fun life, and I don't want them to have like some uptight parent kind of lifestyle where they're afraid to talk to me. You know what I mean? I have my rules, but you're gonna I'm, be one of the few people in history that says that my butthole paid for Disney. You're right. My butthole paid for Disney about four times. Cool. Only fans. You literally <laughs> have the coolest butthole ever. I hey, do. We always try to shout out our OnlyFans girls. So uh, tell them where they can find you on OnlyFans. If you go to my Instagram, it's in my bio. I'm terrible with remembering my shit, to be honest. Because I I put shit on there and then I'm like, oh yeah, I have an OnlyFans. I better make some more content. So, what kind of stuff do you put on there? Spicy shit. Oh, you can't give it. Uh... You got to give, you can't say all of it because they have to go look at it. First of all, I mean, like on my homepage, I mean, there's girls who have $10 subscriptions and it's at barrel. But for me, like, I'm not doing that. I mean, you can come to the club and see my titties for free on stage, but I... I put teasers like work selfies or like where I look like I'm naked, but I'm clearly not, or it's a different angle where I'm naked, but you can't see anything. And then if you want more rated X rated content, obviously you've got to pay for it. You got to inbox me, but I have the goods. Uh, every, everybody has told me that has one. I don't subscribe to anybody. I just don't. If you want to send me shit, you send me shit. Otherwise right. I'm not supposed to see it. But I, that's every girl that I know that has made a lot of money off there. That it's all about the inbox. Yeah, it definitely is. You're not making anything on your home screen. Honestly, that's where, because they, those people can make, it's more personal because it's private. No one's seeing their request or seeing them. So it's kind of like dirty on the low. Like they can talk raunchy. They can tell their fetish. They can talk to you any type of way and no one's going to see it. So if they want to see a picture of me finger my butthole, I can I can send it to them. It's blurred. They can't view it until they pay for it. And I'll know when they paid for it. So it'll be in the inbox. It'll tease them because it's blurred. They'll know it's there. And they'll be tempted. If they don't pay for it, fuck it. If they do, guess what? It's unblurred. My life goes on either way. So also, that is the most casual finger in my butthole in the <laughs> I am the most down to earth casual person ever. Oh, I'm just yeah. Yeah. sexually open so it doesn't bother me to talk about shit like that i'm so sexually shy it's crazy at that point i'd be like everybody on here come visit my only fans help me pay for another disney trip that's come see I'm, my butthole that's <laughs> what i'm trying to get you to do right now is we're <laughs> dropping plugs not butt plugs but radio plugs no we uh, don't your only thing that's a sin no we don't god you just... <laughs> keep those in diamond buttholes are the best Diamond buttholes. Diamond buttholes. See, you gotta have a shiny little thing. I don't. I don't care. And it is a sight to see when you're going down, and you're a fucking girl, and she got a shiny little butthole. You gonna look? I don't want a surprise with a shiny little butthole. It's not a surprise. You are gonna see it right away. It's bling I, bling. No, I don't want to see bling bling as I'm going down. Pink Well, I mean, pull a bitch out then. Oh, you're talking about your same green butthole. <laughs> I am so more reserved in this. You, I like. I know I already to anybody that's watching on YouTube right now. Uh, I know that I look bloodshot. It's not my blood pressure. She's actually making me fucking bloodshot. <laughs> These are weird things that you're saying to me. 
I'm sorry. No, I'm sure every one of these nasty some of bitches that listen to me absolutely love Yeah, me. you like that shit. I do. I know they do. They're all <laughs> nasty little men. I will guarantee yeah. you you're going to get some fucking new subscription ads to your OnlyFans. I hope so. You will. I hope so. How long do you plan on keep doing this as far as stripping and everything? Um, do you have like an end date, I guess is what I'm asking. Not really. Like I said, it's just, I think when I, my body tells, it's just, I don't know how to explain it. Like when it happens, I'll know. My body, my mental, I'll know. It'll just be like, I'll be like, all right, I'm good. I'm done. But as far as like, I mean, my body looks pretty pristine and I've bought a lot of body parts to stay in this industry for a long time. So I'm resilient. As long as I can do it, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I haven't seen like what's under the... I've only seen the Instagram pictures. I'll put it that way. It ain't fucking bad. No. Definitely not. You should have been in Alabama at the same time I was in Alabama. You should have come hang, hung out with us. You're going to have to come hang out here like I asked you to come to Alabama, and you said, oh, I have to do something in Atlanta. I did have to do something. Well, I was in Atlanta. I don't have a dancer's license to dance in Georgia, or I would have been there by now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A dancer's license. Oh, yeah. You guys don't know that? We can't just fling our pussy anywhere. We got to have a license in certain states to do that wild shit. No fucking way. Yeah. Ohio, you don't have... a don't need a required dancer's license. Alabama requires a license. It's about $150 for a dancer's license. And uh, you get a little certificate and it's good for a year. How different it- states have different prices. Like Phoenix, Arizona, it's only $25 for a license. Uh, Michigan's like $300. Alabama's $150. Georgia is like $300, I believe, or $200. How is it less expensive to hunt whitetail than it is to hunt white pussy? I don't know. Good oh, question. God. Why do y'all have to? I don't. Why do you have to pay it? Um. What comes along with it? I guess. The free. You can't work in those states without it. They well, won't I mean, allow. Okay. Yeah, I guess what I'm saying. How do you get it? Like, is there? Like, so, a, like, if I was to go to Georgia, I'd have to go to the sheriff's office and rep- and be like, hey, I need a dancer's license. And then they'd take your picture, they get all your information, they print it out, and then you go to the club and be like, here it is. Because um, if you're caught in the clubs that require, or like states that require a license and you don't have one, you can go to jail. I don't understand what the license is for, though. Uh, it's just the trade certain places you don't have to have it and some places you do just so they don't get in trouble okay what does it say like actually on the report like are they looking for background history i mean what are they looking no for? no i mean they do run a background check just to make sure you're not like some crazy felon and stuff um i think i have one in the in my kitchen hold on so but there's no way that you can't be a or that if you're a felon you can't strip um i mean they do look at your background they are pretty strict really? with high Yeah. They don't want like drug addicts or anything like that. Um, I have one right here. If I so can like show a, you. a random state can like deny you. Can you guys see all... this? Holy shit. So it's like state of Alabama. And then it'll say license year. So I have it till this year. It'll stay the address of the club when it was issued. Um intelligence information bureau and it'll tell you like how much it cost um it's an ocu basically it's an occupational license That's and certain states you have yeah it's like a business license i have my llc so your I have has to have an have... llc are you shitting me i do holy fuck i'm my own business so like if we have another pandemic and we shut down I personally can get a small business loan on myself. Um, So like also when you have an LLC as a dancer, anything like getting my nails done, my hair done, going tanning, 
anything that benefits me to look better for my job is a write-off. My tits were a write-off. My ass was a write-off. Um, my lipo was a write-off. Nails, hair, right skin. Ass? I got, I got a BBL. What's I got a, a bigger ass. So it's a fat, basically like a fat transfer. I'm not very fat. I'm not very big. So I had to find some on my body. So they did lipo and then they stuck it in my ass. How tall are you? Five one. Oh, I'm little. Oh, she's five one and tattooed. I'm fucked. <laughs> I'm little. Oh my god. But yeah, anything like hotels, flights, gas, nails, anything I have, anything that has to do with work, traveling, or making myself look better for work is a tax write off. I just gotta like, save receipts from everything I do. You like strippers travel in packs? Like, do y'all go with each other to places? Do you have, like, your own um, group of I personally don't. I'm sure there are girls who do. Um, I get highly annoyed with females very quickly. I think they're very catty Understood. and very annoying. And I like to travel by myself, so I don't have to, like, make plans according to what everybody likes because I don't give a fuck. So if you don't like it, tough shit. So I just go by myself. And if I do go with anybody, it's usually just my best friend because we are pretty similar. So anything I decide or she decides, I usually we usually are okay with. So is she, is she a dancer or just a best friend? Oh, uh, she's a dancer as well. Okay. Yeah, that just seems like the coolest part. But usually in that, like, here's a weird thing: is like when dancers travel in packs, it's not really a smart idea, anyways, because when you go to a club, um that you've never been to they usually like if you go with two girls they'll usually hire both girls as long as they're decent looking but if you come with three girls that's too much it's like they don't want to take on three girls plus what if one's ugly then they got to send them all home it's just too much so usually traveling with more than two girls is just not a smart idea for you financially but don't y'all have to pay them in the first place for being there uh, depending on where you go, we have like a house fee. So like Alabama, their house fee is $30. Um, they you get you've $30 got $30 what you make? No, no, no. Like $30 total. That's just the house. Um, so at the end of the night, they'll be like, hey, I need your house. So you'll pay them 30 They have a, like Alabama has a requirement where you have to do a minimum of five dances. Um, they're $25 a dance. And so they take five of every dance that you do. You have to do a minimum of five or you owe, let's say I do three. And at the end of the night, I owe them $10 because I didn't do five dances. You know what I mean? Uh, but every club is different. Every club, you know, has a different house. Some house fees are by the time you get there, like if I get there at seven, it's only $10. If I get there at 11, it's $50. It really just depends on where you go, and there are several rules. I never knew there was any rules. Oh, yeah. What they take we- every dance that you do, they take money out, obviously. But then you have a set fee that you have to pay. Some clubs, it's before you even go into the club, you've got like as soon as you walk in, you've got to pay your house, or they won't let you work. It's like renting the space. You're using their space as an independent contractor to make money. So you've got to pay them for that space. Plus you're taking up property. That's what it is. Right. Uh, you just gave me such a good one. I'm going to ask you until the next week. Bad joke. I forgot about it. Just right. Fucking what, is, what was like something that you said right before? What was the question? What, what was the question? Right before I said that stupid ass joke, what was the point of what you said? What was the point? Yeah. Like, wait, oh. if you had to sum it all up, what you just said. I, I'm a dumbass because I don't even know what the question yeah, was. Both, we both fucked up. Because <laughs> they're like, I don't remember. No, oh, I remember what it was now. So, like in baseball, do you know what unwritten rules are? I guess. I'm not too familiar. I mean, I watch okay. baseball, but... Unwritten rules are rules that are not in the rule book that the players automatically know. So it's things that you shouldn't have to say or tell another player. What are some of the unwritten rules like that every stripper should know without you ever having to say? 
Like, y'all got to have your own little code of ethics or, like, your own little honor system or something. Um, I don't, it's hard to say because every girl has a different moral code. You know what I mean? Yeah. We I have just, like set actual rules, and then like say like Alabama, we don't have to wear pasties. Some girls do, but in like Ohio, it's a requirement by law that you wear pasties in an environment that sells alcohol. Some girls will take them off in a dance to get more money from a man. You know what I mean? Some girls have that, like, I don't care. He's going to pay me more. I'm taking it off and showing my nipples. And some girls are like, fuck that. I'm not losing my job. I'm not about to take off tape for this random man who's going to try and suck my tits. Like, it just depends on the person, honestly. Okay. Is there any ultimate do not do? Don't fuck in the club. That's no, that's no one rule. Do not fuck in the club. Don't fuck in the club. Don't suck dick. Don't do hand jobs. Don't let the nah, man pull his dick out. You know what I mean? Don't pull your pussy out on stage. Any like most obvious fucking common sense things. But girls are still stupid and do it. So. Last question. Last question. And by the way, you've been great. You know, I very much appreciate it. Safely, very interesting. You did a very good job. But uh, last question, if you could go back to 18 years old and you're talking to somebody else, or no, you talking to an 18 year old, what would you tell them to do to be in this field? I would tell them it's, I would tell them to have a backup. Don't make this their main career because it's not consistent. Um, And like when the pandemic hit, some clubs, some states shut down. There was no work. Then they, you know what I mean? Like, they're like, what am I going to do? How am I going to survive? You know what I mean? You literally got to be smart about your moves, your money. You've got to be five steps, steps ahead of everything. If you're going to be a dancer, be smart. You know what I mean? If someone told me, I mean, obviously I was smart because my mom, you know, she kind of like led me in the right direction with saving my money when I was a younger dancer. But these girls, they get five, six hundred dollars and they're like, I'm going to Gucci, I'm buying a purse, or I'm going to buy Louis Vuitton. And I'm like, that's wonderful. We'll spoil yourself. But like every time, no. So if I could say something to the 18 year old dancers or younger baby strippers, it'd honestly be, I know it's glamorous to make all this money and like, ooh, it's like trending to be a stripper. But save that shit. If someone told me at 18, I would be like, yeah, right. But at the same token, like, I'm telling you, save it. Because if I had saved every penny that I made since I was 18, I'd be a billionaire right now. I wouldn't even have to work. I'd have a nice house, 20 cars. Like, you know what I mean? I'd be financially set. But I was dumb. I was stupid. I spent money on dumb shit like they do. You know what I mean? But I've, as I've progressed in age, I have became more mature and smarter with my money. But save it. Save, save, save. <sighs> You're a cool ass person. You don't really need what you are. And uh, I appreciate you on the show. Hey, you won me over. You're way more than just a nice pair of tits than that. You're actually well, very, you're actually very smart. You're a cool ass person. Thank you very much. Well, let's go check her out on social media. Her OnlyFans or TikTok or Instagram. All that good shit. And thank y'all for listening to Politics. I will catch y'all the next time.